Walt, tell me about your, uh, your motivation to make this video. Uh, well, we've been out there with the media outlets on probably 60 to 100 different TV stations and radio and such. And what happens sometimes, though, is things, you know, don't always get said right or someone perceives something that we're doing incorrectly. And there's incorrect information being disseminated out there pretty broadly um, that if people don't have the right information, they can't protect themselves properly. And a lot of these are things that people think they're protected if they do X, but they're really not. And we want to make sure people know how to protect themselves. The major credit card companies are saying the information pulled from an electronically pickpocketed card poses no risk to the cardholder because electronic pickpocketing itself doesn't pull the cardholder's name. That's actually false. Some of them do still broadcast your name, most of them don't, but that isn't actually, doesn't protect you in any way at all because most transactions out there never even look at the name. I mean, we're always told, you know, when we're on the phone placing an order online, it says type in your name exactly as it is on the card or they'll ask you that. And we all think that, hey, if we spell it wrong, forget the middle initial, the transaction's going to decline. It doesn't even look. If next time you place a transaction, make up a name, change your first name, and you're going to see the transaction is going to go through. The two things that get you an approval is the account number and the expiration date. After that, it's up to the merchant how far they go, but the name is never actually compared. The major card companies are saying the three-digit code printed on the back of the credit card is never transmitted. It cannot be pulled during electronic pickpocketing. That's true, that it's not transmitted, but that does not mean you're not at risk. This is another thing that just kind of throws people off because they think, oh, if you don't have that three-digit code, um, they're not going to be able to make a purchase. But what they don't realize is, first of all, that's not the only code on a card. The magnetic stripe has a different three-digit code that's different from the one printed. And there's actually a dynamic CVV code that's transmitted from the radio chip. And in fact, if you just take that and use that code on a mag stripe of, say, a hotel room key, you can still make a purchase. And in fact, we did that again with various news outlets. And we walked right into a, uh, a store and used that card with that dynamic code that we received. And it went through just fine. The major card companies are saying that each RFID transaction is issued with a different dynamic code and a maximum of only one fraudulent transaction can occur should the cardholder become a victim of electronic pickpocketing. Well, we've actually noticed when we're scanning cards that that dynamic CVV code does change each time. And so when they said this, we naturally thought, well, at least it does protect people from multiple transactions, at least ones that require that code. But when we actually tried it in the real world, we, we copied that one number and we went to three Fortune 500 companies from fast food to big box retailers. And we went to three in a row with one number, thinking the second and third one were going to be declined. And in fact, in every case, they approved the transaction. So again, this is a, a false reality. It doesn't actually happen in the real world. Stacking multiple RFID credit cards in your wallet will jumble the information and block electronic pickpocketing. This is false, and it's actually been reported multiple times in the media, and we've seen it out there where somehow everybody thinks that because you have a whole bunch of cards all operating on the same frequency that they somehow interfere with each other. This is false, and let me just demonstrate that for you. I'm going to take four RFID credit cards here, and I'm going to scan them one at a time just so you know that they're all radio chipped cards. And as you can see, all four of those have a radio chip in them. Now I'm going to put them tightly together and put them over the reader, it reads just as easily. There's actually technology built into the cards to avoid collisions, and it actually tells each card to be quiet until it's asked for its information. So you could iterate through someone's entire wallet in a matter of a second. So this is not a way to protect yourself. It has been reported that Tyvek alone or Tyvek sleeves protect cardholders from electronic pickpocketing. Uh, this is false as well, and let me just demonstrate. I have two sleeves here. This is just a plain Tyvek sleeve from a, a regular bank that gives these out for to protect magnetic stripe. I'm going to go ahead and put my card in here, and you can see it easily reads right through that Tyvek sleeve. It does nothing to shield you. Um, we actually make a secure sleeve, and it's Tyvek on the outside, and I think that's you know the origins of this story. Um, it's Tyvek on the outside, but we have a special shielding material inside that's actually there, and you can see no matter what we do, we can't read this card until we actually start to pull it out, and then you can read it. So, you know, don't feel that just because you have a Tyvek sleeve, you're protected. I want to make sure people know that you have to buy a particularly shielded sleeve. It's not just your average Tyvek sleeve. Only hard metal wallets prevent electronic pickpocketing. Uh, this is false. I, you know, you may have seen this wallet out there. It's this hard metal thing that 
not many people would really want in their pocket. It can kind of shield while it's closed, but it suffers the same problems from the other wallets that we test it. As soon as you open it, I can read right through this. So there's no need to, you know, give up regular functionality of a normal wallet for this hard metal wallet when you can simply use a shielded leather wallet. So you don't have to change your lifestyle just to be protected. And as you can see, that still can't read that card even open or closed. Are all RFID blocking wallets made the same? Unfortunately not. We've been trying to get word out there that people need to protect themselves, and one of the ways is through an RFID blocking wallet. But you do gotta be careful where you bought it from and what kind of testing procedures they do, because this is a wallet that we ordered out of a magazine and it says RFID blocking, so you figure you're safe, right? Unfortunately, as soon as I put my uh, RFID credit card in here and put it near a reader, even closed, it can read that card. And in fact, some of the ones that shield a little better, when you open them, they can be read. And in fact, if you really want to protect the card properly, you want to protect the person at all parts of the transaction, not just when it's closed. So if you don't see someone actually test it, um, I'm going to just show you how we do it with ours. This is an Identity Stronghold Secure Wallet, and every single slot in here is protected, even when open. So granted, it does shield this way. But what you really want to see manufacturers do is do it this way. Does it still shield even when open? If you don't see a manufacturer being able to demonstrate that, then it probably isn't a fully shielded RFID blocking wallet. You have to touch someone with a scanner in order for their credit cards to be read. I know a lot of times they call this like bump and clone and such, but you really don't have to. When we're going to try this supposed RFID blocking wallet that we showed a minute ago doesn't do a good job. And you can see even with this, I can still read it from a couple inches away. Now, this is just an off-the-shelf reader. There's higher power ones with larger antennas, more power. You could go a foot, two foot. In fact, laboratories have shown that they can do this from 30 feet away. But if you think about, you know, typical pickpocket, actually, they would usually bump into you, someone would bump into you, distract you, and they'd literally reach in your pocket and take that wallet right from you. This is a dream in the park for them because they're just walking near you. They could get behind you on an escalator in line, and they don't even have to touch you. So to them, even an off-the-shelf reader, which these are, you know, found everywhere out there on the Internet, is, is a great tool for them. You have to be a merchant to buy one of these readers, correct? And in fact, that's not correct. Anybody can actually purchase what I did here online on the internet. You don't have to be a store. You don't have to be a merchant. Uh, that's a common question. People think, well, this equipment must be hard to come by, right? And in fact, it's not. I mean, brand new, this uh, setup here is a couple hundred dollars, but if you buy stuff used on auction sites, you'd be under $100. They're readily available. The bad guys can buy these all day long. In fact, we buy these things by the dozens on auction sites for you know just a few dollars a piece. A lack of arrest proves that people are not committing electronic pickpocketing. Um, this again, it, it's one of those things that actually kind of proves the reverse is true. The lack of arrest actually is a big problem because that means this crime is, is being committed on huge numbers going undetected and unreported so people don't realize it's going on. This is such an easy crime to pull off and so difficult to detect by law enforcement that people literally get away with this on a daily basis. It, there's no common transaction point. In fact, we've done training for law enforcement officers and they talk about how someone passing someone with a case such as this um, does, just doesn't rise to probable cause to stop them and, and look what's in the, the equipment. And in fact, when we actually had a recent uh, conference of uh, financial crimes investigators, when we actually made this statement, uh, there was chuckles from the audience because they knew that just because something isn't reported doesn't mean it's not happening. The best way to prevent this crime is to be proactive and actually protect yourself.